There's nothing new about my attraction to wide field astrophotography. In today's video, I will conclude a project that will improve the quality of the images that we will see throughout this year a lot. Hello, welcome to the Astronominas channel. I am Fab. In today's video, I will assemble a setup that will fill the gap between the images taken with my Canon 2000D with the EF 50mm lens and the ASI 183MC Pro with the Sky Rover 60 Super ED. The images taken with the Canon EF 50mm lens are good and allow the visualization of very large areas of the night sky in detail but they lack general definition and create some optical and chromatic aberrations in the stars, mainly at the corners of the images. The Sky Rover 60 Super ED, on the other hand, has exceptional detailing, but it does not allow framing large areas of the night sky without creating a mosaic, which requires a lot of work. The solution to this problem would be purchase an 85 or a 100mm lens, but this would only optimize the equipment's apparent field of view, still keeping the aberrations at the corners of the images. With that in mind, Ascar created the FMA series, which are modular equipment that can be used as a lens, telescope or guide scope. I chose the FMA 135, which is an apochromatic triplet system and even comes with a reducer slash flattener that brings the focal ratio down to the respectable f4.5 and turns the FMA-135 into a sextuplet. I will mount the FMA-135 on a ASI 533MC Pro with the ZWO 2-inch filter drawer to obtain a wider range of possibilities. Guided by an ASI 120mm mounted on a Isvibone SV165 guided scope, and now this will be controlled by an ASI Air Mini. The Ascar FMA135 is so far the smallest apochromatic refractor in the world in addition to being an extremely light and compact device, weighing only 280 grams and measuring only 113 millimeters. It allows the use of sensors up to APS-C format. It has a 30 mm aperture, 135 mm focal length and f4.5 focal ratio which is great for astrophotography. The equipment comes with all necessary adapters and accessories for use, including the red anodized aluminum tubular support with three positions for adding accessories such as finders, red dots, guide scopes and etc. In my case, I will add the SV165 guide scope on one side, the ASI Air Mini on the other and a red dot type finder scope on top. I designed the supports according to my needs, aiming at a good balance of the setup, and they were manufactured by Astro Sigma Brazil. In addition to the perfect fitting, the finishing and precision in the manufacture of Astro Sigma parts are excellent. If you need any custom-made accessory for your equipment, contact Astro Sigma using the links I will leave in the video description below.
I chose the ASI 533MC Pro because it has a square one inch sensor, which is excellent for framing most deep sky objects and because it's full well capacity of 5K, which also favors its using environments with a lot of light pollution. Full well capacity is the ability of the sensor pixels to store photons, without them becoming saturated and sprawling the light for the pixels around. The IMX533 sensor's pixels are 3.76 microns, exactly the same size as the Canon 2000D pixels. This combination leads to an undersampling of the image scale with a ratio of 5.74 arc seconds per pixel, resulting in smoother images, which is sufficient for a wide field of view astrophotography. The ASI Air Mini is the ZWO's compact version of the mini computer that has revolutionized astrophotography in recent years. Weighing less than 120 grams and 50% smaller than its bigger sister, the ASI Air Plus, this little box controls everything, from polar alignment to framing and location of the objects through the tablet and smartphone screen via Wi-Fi. The ASI Air Mini's reduced size and weight is perfect for this setup and will be mounted on a Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i tracker. It's autumn, and that it couldn't be any different, I chose the Itakari 9 Nebula as the first target for the ASCAR FMA-135. I chose to add the 2-inch filter drawer to the setup to have a wider range of approaches to each object. So I use two different types of filters, a Svebon ER cut and a ZWO dual band. The main object is to obtain the best of both worlds. The perfection in the star's colors offered by the ER cut filter, with the exuberance in hydrogen dust clouds offered by the dual band. As this is my first time using the ASI 533 Pro camera, I will keep the gain at 180, which is exactly 50% of the available range, and the exposure of each light frame at my infallible 120 seconds, with the cooling at minus 10 degrees. I started the captures with the ZWO dual band filter exactly at 7 and 30 pm, with the nebula at 45 degrees of altitude, and very close to the series light pollution, precisely to test the filter's quality. By around 9 and 30 pm, after finishing capturing 60 light frames, I switched to the AR cut filter with the nebula red at 75 degrees of altitude and far away from the city lights. So I capture another 60 light frames of 120 seconds and just before the midnight I had the whole acquisition process finished. In total I got 57 usable light frames with the ZWO dual band filter and another 55 light frames with the ER cut filter. So I performed the individual data process obtained with each filter and then performed a second overlay resulting in an image 
package with 3 hours and 44 minutes of total integration time. This setup was exactly what I need in terms of field of view and versatility and is sure to yield excellent results during the reminder autumn and now the winter. Knowing how to choose the equipment, have in mind our objectives, it is essential to achieve the desired results without frustration. Sometimes it may seem difficult to choose the right equipment, especially when we are starting out. But with the advances in new technologies and the wide variety of brands and equipment current available, it is practically impossible not to find what you need. I hope you enjoyed this weekend's images. I wish you all clear skies and see you soon.